Thanks everybody for joining us. As Skylar said, you know, we're really happy to take questions during this. So just put them in the chat and we will try to be monitoring that so we can, we can stay up to date with what you want to know about. Um, you know, our goal with this really is to go through what's changed in the past quarter at Seekout and to give you kind of a sneak peek of where we're going in the future. Um, so, you know, the core of what we do is really the data and the profiles we can build about candidates. Um, just for a little bit of background, you know, this is a slide we use kind of internally to talk about what we build here at Seekout. And we really want to build what you see on the left here, these aggregated, rich, comprehensive, what we call Talent 360 profiles, where we pull in as much information about candidates as we can. We do that with external data, public data. We do it also with internal data if we have integrations with your systems. And then we combine all that information into a search and analytics and matching engine. And really that's the core of our technical expertise here, right? We're, we're very good at search, at aggregating data and providing analytics over that. And so once we do that, we can really deliver on a lot of your key talent priorities. Obviously we do passive sourcing and that's kind of where we started, but there's lots of other high value scenarios that we can enable for you with this core platform. But the core of that really is data. And so in this quarter, we've expanded our talent pools across the board. Um, you know, our search index of public profiles is now uh, over 640 million candidates. And it's important to know that we, we don't, uh, we actually deduplicate uh, profiles and we throw out clearly bogus profiles. So we're not trying to maximize a number here, um, you know, kind of to be impressive. We're trying to actually get to the best set of candidates. Um, and, and even with doing that kind of deduplication and throwing out of, uh, you know, clearly spam profiles, our, our uh, pool of talent is growing a lot. So also in GitHub and our expert databases, those are larger now than they've ever been. Uh, just a little quick view of our, of our uh, talent pool growth over this year. These graphs are all starting in January of this year, and you can see that across all candidates, you know, we've had pretty consistent growth. Um, and then if you do specialized searches, so, you know, all the candidates we've been able to identify as uh, Black or African-American candidates in North America, that's been consistently growing. And even simple searches like keywords account executive, you can see the growth over the course of the year. We've also brought in a completely new data source uh, for tech candidates. We've uh, indexed Stack Overflow data. And you know we don't like to just bring in links to, to new data sources. We wanna deeply analyze. And that's what we've done with Stack Overflow. We've looked at the topics that these candidates are um, asking and answering questions about. And then we match all that information with the rest of our aggregated data and make that searchable. And then when you find the candidates, you can click in like in these examples to find the exact uh, conversation that the candidate has been having uh, on Stack Overflow. You can use this to understand their capabilities. You can also use it as an engagement uh, topic. You can you know, reference the questions or answers that they've been uh, engaging with on Stack Overflow. So we're excited about that data. Obviously a huge focus for us is on diversity sourcing. We're um, confident that we're the leading tool for identifying uh, pools of talent that are going to increase representation within your companies. And uh, we have invested a lot in uh, improving um, on our already strong position there. Uh, one of the changes we've made, uh, just to be transparent, is to kind of revamp how we're using terminology in our system. We've always had a mode where you can reduce bias. We've just gone ahead and rebranded that to bias reducer mode. And we're doing that across the board, trying to figure out how we can use language in our product that's more inclusive. We've also improved our classifiers. And for those of you who are at this session last quarter or possibly the quarter before, I gave a kind of review of precision and recall, which are the two concepts in information retrieval. And they basically show how many candidates you bring back that match your search uh, uh, of all the ones that are available. And then how many you bring back that, that were wrong, you know, false positives. And so the great thing about our improvements to diversity classifiers in this quarter is that we've improved recall, bringing back more candidates without sacrificing any of the precision. We don't bring back more false positives. And so for example, our female classifier in the past two months, uh, we've increased the number of candidates by 10% without increasing the number of false positives. We've also done a lot of work for individual customers on custom diversity classifiers. And I would just encourage you if you're um, a customer or if you're 
you know, considering seek out to talk to us about the ways that we can run diversity classifiers that would be unique for your organization for the types of talent you're trying to um, target and increase representation for. So another key area for our product obviously is talent insights. Um, you know, in Seek Out, you can always jump between the individual candidates and uh, the um, aggregate data, the bird's eye view <clears throat> about the talents, talent that you find. And we've, um, you know, to date had really rich insights, but they've been static. You know, we define what the report is that you're seeing. Um, and you can only look at one slice of the talent pool at a time. So one of the biggest changes we made over the last quarter is to provide the ability to do what we call custom and comparative reports. And these are two examples here, but um, to kind of walk you through it, I'll, I'll switch over to Seek Out and show a demo here. But this is Seek Out and I'll go to Insights. Uh, we have a custom report template that you can build any kind of report you want. We're happy to work with you on that to make sure that you can get the reporting that you want from there. But we also have these kind of wizards that allow you to walk through reports easily. So if I go to company comparison report, you know, let's pretend I'm at Uber and I want to compare Uber to say, you know, Lyft and Waymo. So if I just say generate report here, we're going to generate a report that compares the employees at Uber to those at Lyft and Waymo. You can instantly see you know, here's what the representation looks like. Sorry, I'm clicking too many things. Representation looks like across these three companies, the locations that they have employees, years of experience, you know, does one have a lot more experienced um, employees than the other and more. And you can add in more of these charts to get at the data that you really wanna see. This chart here is looking at the overall talent pool, but you can narrow this down. Say you wanted to look at, um, you know, we'll add a report filter for Let's just do a simple one for keywords. So if we wanted to look at the machine learning developers at Uber versus Lyft and Waymo, I can just run that, add that as a search. And now I see the comparative insights for just that sub-segment of users, or, sorry, of employees at each of those companies. So this really helps you benchmark. It helps you understand the competition. And it, you can also build reports like this that'll allow you to find talent that is say diverse, where should you target in terms of groups or locations or schools? Or where would you think about um, placing ads, for instance, if you wanna find a more uh, kind of target rich environment for the types of candidates you wanna find. So as you use this, I encourage you to reach out. Um, it's in preview for all uh, Seek Out customers. And we think that you can really squeeze a lot of insight out of the core data that we have. Another big improvement we've made in Insights is that when you're looking at pools of data, we now show um, skills and power filters in this word cloud view that gives you kind of a sense of whether your search is on track. You'll know instantly what kinds of capabilities and skills the underlying talent pool has. And if they're software developers, we're gonna show you the top developer tools that they understand, the top languages. And we've always had project insights. So you, once you build out a project, we will show you the aggregate insights about that project. What we haven't had is the ability to show you insights over very large projects. If you have thousands and thousands of candidates within the project. So a new change that we have made is to be able to uh, show you insights over projects that have those thousands and thousands of candidates. We've also been investing in candidate engagement over the past three months. The biggest change we've made here is to replace the editor, the tool that you use in SeekOut to compose your multi-step email outreach campaigns. The editor we had before, to be frank, it was a little bit limited in terms of the amount of formatting you could do, the way you could insert, insert images, and it didn't preserve formatting if you came from Gmail or Outlook, copied something and pasted it into our editor. We've fixed all those problems with a new editor and added a bunch of new uh, capabilities to the editor. So if you haven't tried that in a while and you have messaging enabled on your system, uh, I encourage you to check that out. We've also done a lot of work to um, make sure that when there are problems with the connection between Seekout and your email system, we can handle that more robustly and alert you when things need to be fixed. And it's always a challenge to know when someone has 
uh, replied in an affirmative way to one of your messages, and we've improved the way that we do that as well. So, you know, at the core, I talked about how, you know, we're really a search platform and, you know, we continue to invest a lot in search and bringing back the right candidates, but it's also really important that we explain to you so that you can understand why candidates return. We, we often get um, questions from customers about saying, hey, I use this keyword. And in the summary that SeekOut shows, I don't see that keyword right there. And, you know, that's because we don't show everything from someone's profile, but I can assure you that if you're running a search and someone's coming back, that term or, or word is on their profile. But we do wanna give you more confidence and be able to make it more scannable when you're, when you're looking at candidates to understand what they're about. So a big way that we do that is with power filters. Um, you know, this isn't a new feature. We've had power filters uh, for years and they're one of the most used features in SeekOut. Um, but just to review what they are, they're an instant kind of one-click access to very complicated searches. You can start with a power filter and then add on keywords or any other filter. And they're a really effective way to target your search, um, especially when you're doing complex searches. We have power filters that uh, we create um, that's for everyone in SeekOut. We build custom ones. Uh, if you want to work with us, uh, we'll, we'll help you build those out. And uh, we've uh, enabled power filter creation as of the last few months. We've improved the way that you can now edit those. Um, you can now change the definition, uh, you can rename them, you can share them with different people. So that's a new feature that we've rolled out, the ability to edit those power filters that you've created on your own. But in general, if you ever have trouble creating those, you can still reach out to our team. We're happy to work with you. If you send us some JDs you're looking at, we can create power filters for those, or if you have lists of companies that you commonly source from, things like that, we're happy to build power filters for you. So on the explanation point that, it's kind of, that I was making of trying to um, make it clear to you why candidates are coming back, we've added a new concept in SeekOut called badges. And on this profile, you can see that this candidate has two badges, machine learning and computer vision. And when you click on one of these badges, you'll see the keywords from their profile that tell us that this candidate is a match. <clears throat> so I'll switch over to SeekOut and just show you an example of this. You know, if that's okay, I can discard the report I was making. Um, if I go here, I'll just do a simple uh, power filter search. Let's say I want to find somebody with cloud technologies. Well, you may feel like, great, I totally trust SeekOut. They say cloud technologies, uh, I believe them. But you know, a lot of you are really thorough and want to make sure that you know exactly why the candidate's coming back. And we want to help you with that. So this candidate came back. He has the badge for cloud technologies. He's an expert at cloud technologies. But if you're not sure why, you can click this and we're going to explain to you the, the terms on his profile that lead us to believe that he's an expert at cloud technologies. This is probably a simple example. Anybody who's got AWS, you can make that connection. But we do that for really complicated, uh, you know, where there's lots of complicated searches where there's lots of jargon uh, and, and terms that you might not understand. So that's another big improvement. We want you to be able to really easily see why candidates match, be able to glance through their profile and see what they're expert at. The other big change we made with power filters is these are really complicated searches. And um, those of you who use power filters a lot know we had a limitation before where you could only use three at a time. Um, and that's because the combined query was just so long. It was um, just a performance burden on our search engine. We have done a lot of architectural work to pre-compute all these um, power filters. So now you can run five at a time, which should cover most use cases. You know, if you want to do it, like in this case, Java data science, uh, a specific security clearance, someone who knows cloud technologies and computer vision all at once, you can do that in SeekOut and the results come back almost instantly because they're all pre-computed. Um, so that performance and just the complexity you can add there is a huge boon to being able to use power filters. One more um, feature we've added around understanding candidates and being able to kind of have greater glanceability through their profiles. We've added what we call time zone distance because we know many of you are, uh, your companies are open to remote work, but specific teams may have requirements about working hours or collaboration hours. And so this really instantly lets you see what time zone the candidate is in and how far away they are in terms of um, working hours. And another key part about SeekOut is 
we've always been uh, very um, keen on integrations. We know that we are part of your workflow and we don't want to be uh, a hassle in your workflow. We want to make our data available to other tools. We want to make your workflow as seamless as possible. <clears throat> and so we've expanded who we integrate with this quarter. Um, I think this slide actually isn't fully up to date. We have more partners than this, but I didn't have time to update it uh, before this seminar. Um, but some of the new integrations this quarter included a new API with great people, track talents, recruiter flow, and Invenius. Um, but just to be clear, you know, we do want to make your workflow as easy as possible. So if there are tools you want us to integrate with, we're very happy to do so. Um, just reach out to your CSM, or if you're working with one of our sales folks, just make that clear to them. You know, the, the reason we want to do uh, integrations is to make your workflow more efficient. Um, you know, specifically when you're integrating Seek Out with your ATS or CRM, um, it can really help you because you can obviously export candidates from Seek Out into your ATS or CRM, but you can also, if the integration is deep enough, see, uh, be, work more efficiently because you see who in your company is already interacting or if you have a history with that candidate before it gets to your ATS or CRM. We can also give you insights over your ATS or CRM data um, and even more fully understand the value you're getting out of SeekOut because we'll be able to track source of hires. So we kind of think of three types of integration with SeekOut. The first one is the one that most of our customers use, some kind of one-way export where you find candidates in SeekOut and you push them into your ATS or CRM. But the second level really is what we call connect and that's a deeper integration. That's where when you're searching in SeekOut, you can see the status from your ATS. So you can see that a recruiter is already working with them. You could see if they had replied for a job. You could see um, you know, when the last time they were contacted right from within SeekOut. And then the deeper level of integration is we do that kind of connection, but we also make all of those candidates from your ATS searchable with all of SeekOut search features and with the most up-to-date profiles that we have. You know, If you think about your ATS data, it's stale, right? And the search is usually not that great. We solve both of those problems because our search is really powerful and you can do uh, the search against the up-to-date profile data. So if you have any interest in learning more about the kinds of integrations we have, um, we have a link at the end of this uh, webinar, but you can also reach out to your CSM or to support at seekout.io. So once you enable those integrations, we've built out, uh, we're, you know, we're sort of extending the Seekout solution to cover other parts of the talent funnel. And one of the biggest ones that we've uh, been working on the last three months is what we call inbound talent. Um, and we know that many of you, uh, you know, receive hundreds or thousands of inbound applicants every day. Um, and that reviewing those applications uh, is incredibly time consuming and pretty disheartening often, right? Because many of the applicants are not even, uh, don't even have the basic qualifications for the job. And so what we have built is an inbound talent matching system that turns the seek out search experience uh, kind of on its head to be able to start with the candidates and the job description and then match those candidates. And we built it as compliant with EEOC uh, that can give you analytics over who's applying to your, to your roles and can really help you save a ton of time going through those and improve the candidate experience because maybe you're okay not replying to the bad candidates immediately, but that probably means you're not replying to the great candidates either. And combined, that leaves a pretty bad impression on all of your candidates. So I'm going to walk you through how this works. Um, when you have inbound talent enabled, you'll have a new tab on your Seek Out page. This is going to import all the jobs from your ATS. If I click into this uh, UX designer role, you can see we have 200 people who have applied. And I can define from the job description the spec for this role. So maybe I say, you know, I need somebody with the design, but you know, what I really need is somebody with at least five years of experience. And you'll see as I do that, the number of qualified candidates reduces because that's a required role, a required uh, skill or background. And if they don't have it, they're going to move out of the qualified pool. And maybe, you know, we, we use Figma as a tool here. So maybe I want to make sure that somebody knows Figma. And that's going to reduce the pool further. Once I have the pool down to uh, a manageable size, because I've entered all of the required skills, I can add on as many preferred qualifications as I want. So maybe I want somebody with agile experience. Maybe I want somebody who has worked in enterprise software. And these preferred skills are going to be used to rank those 38 
qualified candidates. Then I can go to view candidates. I'm gonna see them all and I'm gonna get a scorecard for why they match. And I can move them ahead within the applicant tracking system right here from seek out. So we hope you agree this is gonna speed up a ton of time on those inbound applicants. It's gonna make their experience a lot better. And it's gonna make you be able to find the kind of diamond in the rough of that inbound wave of talent uh, much, much faster. Another area we've been working a lot on, we talked about this in the last <clears throat> uh, update, was candidate rediscovery. This is where you map the profiles from your ATS to the profiles uh, in SeekOut. And you can search, as I said, using all of SeekOut's uh, search capabilities against the up-to-date profiles that are in SeekOut. So we've made some big improvements here. Um, you know, this graphic is just kind of showing how it works with Workday, but we work with many uh, ATSs to make this happen. Um, and the improvements we've made in the past three months are being able to search not just the profile details in the ATS, but also the attachments that have been uploaded with the candidate. And we have now nearly real-time updates. So as someone changes in the ATS, you'll see that change reflected in SeekOut. Again, if you wanna learn more about these extended solutions, we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, just reach out at the end on the link that we'll share or reach out at support.seekout, support at seekout.io. Another one of these extended solutions that we, we have is team connections. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but this is a way for you to upload your hiring team's connections so that you can mine them for warm leads to candidates. This is again, kind of uh, SeekOut's approach turning things on its head. This is our approach with referrals, but rather than using the common referral method where people can just kind of inbound you with whoever they want, this puts the recruiter in control and allows you to reach out to the candidates that have the experience you want through the connections that you know from your own company. Another big advantage of taking this approach is that everyone knows referral networks are typically less diverse than if you use other sources. Unfortunately, you know, people are, are hang out with people who are more like them than more different. So using this kind of model where the recruiter's in control means that you can use all of SeekOut's features to target underrepresented groups, for instance, but then still rely on the ones that have connections to your team members to have that warm intro. So um, that's kind of the, the big chunks of areas that we've uh, built new features on. We've also fixed a lot of bugs. We appreciate all the feedback that um, we get from all of you and patience, honestly, that we get from you when we uh, make a mistake in, in our delivery of some feature. We really appreciate the, the feedback though, requests for new features, and we would love for you to keep those coming. But I did a little bit about the areas that we're investing in going forward. So these big buckets are really the way we think about the product and the kinds of things that we wanna improve uh, for you going forward. Um, you know, we're going to continue to be, uh, uh, just as a note, I'm not sure what to do when people raise their hands. So if you want to interrupt me, uh, go, go right ahead. I'm not, I'm not competent enough at Zoom and, uh, and presenting at the same time. Yeah, but absolutely. So if yeah. you do have, if we have someone who's raised their hand, if you wouldn't mind adding your question to the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, that would be great. Thanks. Well, I'm going to keep going. Uh, we'll kind of talk about these, these core areas. So obviously, we're going to continue to invest in our unified 360 profiles. We're going to bring in more data sources, do better candidate matching. We do feel like we have the best contact info of any tool on the market. Um, but that is a constantly changing <clears throat> space. We review our contact providers every three months. And we, um, and we also... Uh, uh, you know, we, we add new sources all the time. We haven't added any new sources in the past two months, but we did add several new sources about three months ago. Uh, we're going to continue investing in insights. Those comparative reports are a preview of what we're building there. As you see, you know, if there are questions that you see or that you want answered from the data that's in SeekOut, we'd love for you to reach out and tell us uh, what you'd like us to build in that area. But one of the areas we're really focused on is pipeline insights. So you can figure out what's happening to different types of candidates as they move through your talent funnel. We're gonna continue pushing on integrations. We wanna be uh, you know, as seamless and as efficient for you and have you do as few painful uh, mapping or copy paste processes as, as needed. 
Uh, you know, we have a lot of teams that have very large number of Seekout users, and we're investing a lot in our ability to manage those groups um, and the ability for you to kind of port data between users and other enterprise level features. Um, on the efficiency standpoint, you know, we have some weaknesses today, like in, in projects, you can't really do very, uh, very great filtering within those. And we're investing in that to be able to narrow down, especially when you have very large projects. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more with those badges so that you can more quickly scan profiles and figure out the ones that you uh, you want to target. Um, and some of you may have worked with some of our advanced customer success folks who have helped you build really complex queries to do sorting within Seekout searches. You can do that with our search engine, but it's pretty tedious. We'll be building features for you to do that uh, in the UI rather than typing in a bunch of keywords. There's a bunch of other work we're doing on efficiency just to try to get you to be as fast as possible in the tool. On diversity, we'll continue to invest. Um, as I said, we're always re revamping our classifiers to bring back more uh, matching candidates, and we'll be doing more insight reports over diversity characteristics. And then on search improvements, we love all the in, all the questions we get. You know, we we have people coming to us all the time saying, "Hey, can you do this really complicated search?" And sometimes the answer is not yet. Um, sometimes the answer is yes, but it's super complicated. We'll walk you through it. And so we're trying to bring more of that out into the core UI so you can do really powerful searches. Um, I showed you the time zone distance. We really wanna invest in helping you find more remote workers more effectively. We'll be spending a lot of effort on that. Um, we have this type of search called Lambda expressions, which is a very um, geeky term for a very geeky concept uh, where imagine you wanna find somebody who worked at a particular company during a particular set of years in a particular set of roles. Um, that is a very hard search to build. Um, our search engine actually supports it, but we don't have UI for it. So we'll be building UI to make it easy to do complex things like that. So that's some of the uh, roadmap on the current product. And then we're gonna continue to do these extended capabilities, um, things like uh, uh, better integration with your ATS, ability to find, um, new uh, kind of new synergies between the data you have internally and the data that Seekout has about candidates publicly. So that's really all I wanted to cover, um, but I will take a look at questions, uh, Skylar. It sounds like some came in, is that right? Yes, we do have a couple of questions. So we had a clarifying question about um, the badges. So how does Seekout choose what the key attributes are for each person? Yeah, so for each badge, we have a definition. And those badges, uh, the definition can vary. So um, with some of them, it's a set of keywords. Um, like a maybe more simple example is we have a, we have a badge for um, SaaS sales experience. And those, the definition of that badge is really looking at a, a range of titles that would match SaaS sales, and then a range of skills or keywords on the profiles that would correlate with SaaS skills. So that's, that's one example. Um, we also have badges which are about lists of companies or lists of schools. And so those are pretty simple. It's saying, you know, does the school they went to match one of these hundred schools, for instance. And then we have others that are computed in code and those are a little bit harder to explain. Some of those include um, our security clearance filters where we infer clearance based on the role someone is in currently and whether um, that job typically requires that kind of clearance. So with that, we explain the role they're in or were in that requires clearance. Um, and then some are just code. You know, we have a feature that is uh, whether someone is more, we predict they're more likely to move roles in the next 12 months. And that's built using a machine learning classifier. So it's not, we're not able to kind of give in words why we believe that. Um, but being able to tell more about why we're inferring that is, is a key goal of ours. Right, and we do have another question for you. Um, is there in the future going to be a power filter for people with disabilities? We can definitely work with customers on that um, capability. Um, you know, we, we have been experimenting with that. Some of the diversity categories, you know, we don't wanna do in a way that could introduce um, negative bias. Um, but we're very happy to work with you on kind of what your definition would be for a power filter like that and how we'd uh, reveal it. So, you know, disabilities, um, cognitive differences, 
those kind of filters are really important for us to figure out. It's also important for us to, to make sure we get right. So I'd encourage you to reach out and we'd be happy to talk about um, our thoughts about implementing that and how we can kind of test that out with you. Thank you. And I think we have just one um, final clarifying question about ATS rediscovery. Will this be available to everyone on um, each license? Um, and the answer to that is if you um, would like to hear more information about ATS rediscovery, that's um, going to be a little bit different for our current customers. Um, so you can go ahead and reach out to your CSM. If you would like a demo on ATS rediscovery and you don't currently have a license, please um, use that link there that you see on your screen and request a demo. Yeah, it does. ATSs are so wildly different and, you know, the number of records people have range from the you know 5000 to like we have in ours to about you know 2 million some of our customers have so it's a it's kind of a case by case basis we'd love to talk to you about that